All right, so this is another super early sneak peek. There's still a lot to do. I know I'm going to get questions on it, um, but I'm just so excited to have this done. So first and foremost, huge thanks to Frederick. Um, he made all of this possible with his guidance, and he provided almost all the code. I just built um, the controls and the system, the menu system around this. Um, but I've kind of been previewing the new uh, dial control, and it's, it was building up to this, and now I've got this at a point where I can show it. So this will be... Uh, down the line for a future update, but I've got it working. Um, I've still got more work to do on it. I've obviously got code cleanup and testing, um, but it is all functioning. Um, there's still a few pieces also that are potentially going to work. So this is a really early sneak peek, um, but I wanted to share. So if you haven't seen, um, I did uh, introduce a new dial control, particularly on selecting presets. So while your blade is off now, if you uh, hold aux, um, and also thank you to... Uh, to Brian Connor, no sloppy, he provided the voice sounds that you hear because the ones I made were terrible. Um, so by pressing aux while the blade is off, I'm in the preset m menu now, and I can adjust, I can go forward or backward through all my presets just by turning. So. And you can see, and I can go back. And now what I've done is I've added a, 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 a secondary control. So say you're navigating through a bunch of fonts, but you lose your place and you want to go back. If you press aux, it will back up to your very first preset. So you can advance forward and backward and, you know, wherever you want. But if you ever want to jump back to the first preset, you just press aux again. Now, if you want to go to a different preset, you choose the one you want, and then you press power, and it locks that one in. Um, so now you've got that ability. Um, and then in addition, I've now added the dial control to multi-phase. Um, so let me show multi-phase. So with your blade on, multi-phase used to be you'd hold aux and twist to advance one spot. Now with aux and twist, it activates the new dial. So, so now I'm in dial mode. And each turn will advance through all my presets. And I can go back. And you can keep changing, and then when you're at the one you want, again, you press power, and it locks it in. Or if you wanted to, you could also press aux there also and jump back to your first one. Um, but the reason for all of this is actually this new edit menu that I've built. And again, Frederick made almost all this possible, um, his guidance walking you through stuff and providing most of the functions that actually make this work. Uh, but let me go, go into my preset menu, and I'm going to jump to the first one. So... The new edit menu, the idea behind it is for users and also for installers. If you want to be able to make basic edits on the saver but not have to upload every time, um, that's what this new menu is for. Um, and it, it, it goes into an edit mode where you can edit your style. And you can choose any style that exists that from your upload. So that is obviously one caveat. You, you have to have the styles on the board, so they would have had to have been uploaded. Um, but you upload your original config, and then you can edit it as much as you want. So you can do choose styles. You can obviously do color change. Um, but now you can also edit fonts. And the way the font editing works is all you have to do is put a font on your SD card. Go into the font edit mode. And it will find all the valid fonts on your SD card and allow you to choose them. So you don't have to, re you don't have to go into the config and add a new font name if you want. If you just want to change a font, you just put it on the SD card. Obviously it has to be formatted correctly and then you can choose it. You can also edit your track. And again, you can add any tracks you want to your SD card. As long as they're in a tracks folder, this will find it and allow you to select it. So if you want to update tracks on any of your presets, you don't have to go back and upload. Um, and then of course, edit volume. And then the really nice thing is the ability to copy presets. So say you start off, I think I've got about 24 presets on here because I was just testing it out. I do have two blades, so that turns into 48 styles, so that's a pretty good amount of stuff on there already. But you can now mix and match all of these presets, and you can copy them. So, And technically, because you're copying stuff that's on the board, you can go unlimited. Um, so if you have a preset that you like that's in one color with one font, you want to have that same style but a different color and a different font and a different track, you can now copy the preset and then edit both of those to be unique. And you can keep copying presets as much as you want. And of course, if you copy too many presets or you make a copy you don't want, you can also delete presets from this menu. 
Um, so I'm going to walk through all of it. There's, uh, I want to kind of explain it all ahead of time um, and go through everything. The sounds you hear from the menu are from Brian. So again, big thanks for that. Um, but so how it works, you choose the preset you want. So with your dial control, we'll find the preset we want. We'll do green, you press power. That locks it in. Now, with the blade off, we're gonna long hold on aux and power. And it gets a little drowned out, but it says edit mode. I'm actually in edit mode. It ignites the blade because you wanna see your style changes, your color changes, you wanna hear your font and your track changes. So your blade is ignited in edit mode. But the other, the buttons don't do anything anymore except for this new menu. So now, while in this mode, this is the top level. So when you first go in edit mode, there's a top level of the menu. I can go, choose to edit the style, edit the color, edit the font, edit the track, I can set the volume, I can copy this preset, or I can delete this preset, or I can just exit. Um, and how this menu works, I, I put a lot of time and thought into this, is everything is set so the controls are the same and it's very straightforward. So any menu you're in, you're just going to turn the hilt either forward or backward, and that's going to get you to a particular menu. If you like what you want, so for selection, for saving, or for confirming, you're going to press power. So now I'm in edit style. Now, each turn is going to do all of the styles. Now, this actually has two blades on it. So what's going to happen is you're going to edit your first style, your first blade. When you're done with that, you'll edit your second. So if you have accents, if you have a crystal chamber like this, you edit them separately, and you can change the pre the styles individually. So you can have one style and one preset matched with a different style from a different preset, and you can do all of that just from this menu. But I can check out every one of the styles that are on my board. And whatever I put on this board is available. And I've got a lot on here. That one just keeps changing colors. That one's a rainbow fire. Let me get around to one of the good ones. That's an unstable. Uh, so I'll choose this one. So when you get to the one you want, you just press power. And now it's going to say next blade. And now any changes forward or back are going to actually change the crystal, which is a little hard to see. But I've got different crystal styles. So if I have a crystal I like, I can press power and save that. And now both blade styles are now saved in this preset. And you can choose any combinations you want. Now, if you want, I'm in the upper menu again. So I can edit the color, which is pretty straightforward. Um, and the color obviously works separately. Um, so now this is actually a rainbow blade I chose for the crystal, so this one's not going to be affected by color change. But I can edit color. And now I'm in color change mode. And that works as normal. But I can get to a color I like. Let's get to something a little... And we'll go a little purple. And then this also has color zoom built in, so if I hold power, I can zoom in and do a little more fine tuning to get that color perfect. And then I release, and now that color is locked in. Now I'm in the upper menu, let's, so let's edit the font. And it's looking at, I don't have all the fonts that are on the SD card in my config, so it's going to look at everything on the SD, so I'll enter it. Now, each turn of the dial is going to choose a different font from my SD. This one. Actually, let's see what's next. Nice. So I have the Survivor, so a lot of these are the different color sounds. But I also have other styles on here. So that's a Vader sound, so we'll choose that one. So I can lock it in just by pressing power. And now that's saved. And now I can edit the track. And while editing the track, it's actually going to preview your current setting. Oops, I pressed the wrong button, didn't I? Oh no, I'm in it. So I'm in the... So I don't know if you can hear... My track is playing, but I can change it. So 
So whatever track I like, some of these tracks are a little low for this uh, particular hum. But now this sounds like a better track for Vader. If I like the track, again, I just press power. And now I've saved uh, that track. And the nice thing is, is I can, I can exit this menu anytime I want. So I can go around. So edit volume is pretty straightforward, um, but we'll do it. So we'll edit volume. So I'm at max, so I can only go down. And it gets pretty low. So that's minimum volume, so let's go back up. And then I can lock that in. And now that's saved. And now let's go. So now I can copy the preset. So with copy preset and delete preset, it's a two step process. This is where you don't actually do it. So I'm in copy preset, I press power. If I want to confirm, I turn right. If I want to cancel, I turn left. So confirm. confirm. Press power again. Oops. Now I've made a copy. Now that copy is actually going to be the next preset. So I'm still working on this one. But I can exit anytime just by pressing aux when I'm in the top level menu. Or I can turn the dial. Delete preset. Edit style. Delete preset. Oops, I have the wrong sound. Delete preset. Here. That's why I have to exit. So I've exited. So now my saver is normal. So now let's take a look. We'll turn this off. Let's look at the next preset. Select preset. Data. So this is a copy of that preset. So now I've added a brand new preset copying the one that I previously had. So when I go into edit mode on this one, I can change any aspect. And that's the great thing is you can turn to any of these settings that you want. So let's just change the font on this one. And Save. new preset, and say I, I don't want this to be this color. Let's go into the color. color. Let's get a better color. And I want to get a different style for this, so so I can go into edit style. Now I'm going to skip the first blade. Next blade. That's the next blade style. So I'm going to change my crystal only. Save. And now. I can just exit, and now I've got a brand new copy preset created all from the saber with a brand new font, new color on it, and I have obviously style mixes, and you can keep doing it as often as you like. Um, and everything is going to be saved to your presets on I, um, so that file is on your SD. Now, if you ever obviously upload a new OS, those settings will go away, unless you, there is the keep saved files, but because of how this there's going to be a lot related to this in terms of how you're going to set your config up, um, how you want to obviously set up your SD card, and also how you want to uh, format your styles so that they're all interchangeable. But the, so the, the, the menu is working great. All the functions are working great. I can change everything independently um, anytime you want. So if you just don't want, if you just want to change the style on one blade, you go into edit menu, change the style, save, you're done. Blade works normally. Um, if you want to change all your styles, all your fonts, all your tracks, you can do that as well from the menu. Um, it handles one preset at a time. So when you go in and out of the mode, it's only for that active preset. But again, you can copy them. So you can technically start off with, I think, 24 I have. Now I have 25. I can keep making copies and end up with, you know, if you want 100 presets, that's why I put the dial control on the preset change so that it's easier to navigate to them. Um, so still a lot to do. Um, a lot of testing. Um, there is a lot of stuff related to this that has to happen um, with the OS, but the menu system, the edit mode is all working great. Um, I'm going to beat up on it a lot more. There's probably going to be some code cleanup. Um, Forever did help with all the functions, but some of the menu code, I'm sure he's got some more efficient ways. Um, but I'm just so excited to have this done. And the idea behind it is for those of you who you know are, are a little worried about Profi, if you want to get into it, um, this will allow you to easily do the editing on your uh, blade without having to hook to your computer. Obviously, new OSs and big changes for styles, changes for all that kind of stuff, you still have to do uploads. But if you have your saber perfect how you like it and you just want to tinker with your fonts and your colors and your styles and your tracks, you can easily do that now.
Um, so lots of work ahead of us. Um, obviously a lot of testing once this is in that phase, but that's still down the road. Um, but uh, I figured I got it working. I, I couldn't sit on it any longer and I wanted to share. So I uh, hope you all enjoy. Um, I'm going to start a post on the TRA thread for questions, um, but this is still early. So there, there's probably questions that are going to come up that I don't have answers for yet, but uh, I'm super psyched. So I hope you enjoy.